this is Jason Newton, and I'm here today on the banks of the Quinnebog River in Thompson, Connecticut. And today we're going to take a walk of about three miles through the Thompson Woods to go across Chandler Hill to the Senexit Meadow in Woodstock and it's part of our journey of rediscovery of the old Connecticut path. The Quinnebog River is especially beautiful at this time of the year in October and the area that you see before you is the likely place of the fording of the river by the old Connecticut path. So as we start our journey towards Woodstock we'll leave the Quinnebog behind and start climbing uphill across the woods here in Thompson. Open Larned's map of ancient Wyndham County shows a route that leaves and runs in a diagonal towards Chandler Hill and we're going to try and retrace that through the Thompson Woods this morning. A short distance up the hill from the Quinnebog River. Our route brings us down to the Ogier Brook that we'll cross and continue on our way on the other side of Fabian Road here in Thompson. To, we're going to leave Fabian Road behind and enter into the Thompson Woods to cross over the hill and come down by Synexit Meadows. So for the next couple miles we're going to be totally in the woods with no modern roads or houses. Uh, it's a real wilderness back here. As I found in other places along the path, here we can see the intelligent design and the laying of a path that follows right along the edge of a ridge through open woodland. Our route thus far has followed the old cart road through the woods along a ridge, avoiding any wetlands. But here we come down to a small brook that runs down to Ogier Pond and on to the Quinnebog River. And as we come down and take a look here, although the water is flowing over these stones, we can see stones here lined up along the edge. And the appearance of, if we dug down underneath here, uh, likely a box culvert made out of stone that was laid across here as a roadway and that has been filled in. The uh, uh, tunnel underneath the box culvert has been filled in over time so the brook's overflowing it now instead of going under it. So we'll take advantage of some of the stones that are still here to walk right across this little stream and as we look back you can see right in front of us here this large stone in the center I believe would be part of the surface of the box culvert that once stood here. As we leave the stream behind we begin the ascent to the hill. Again uh, the route follows the contours of the hills so although we're climbing it's not too steep along this section and just follows the grade gradually uphill. We're near the ridge just below Chandler Hill and if we headed off to the north here in this direction we'd come out on Norman Hill Road in the north part of Woodstock and off to the left here we curve around Chandler Hill on our way to Synexit Meadows. You know it's difficult to have an appreciation for the woodland roads and paths and trails that are here in the Thompson Woods from the ground level but if you looked at this from above using an aerial map and photograph you'd see that there's a whole network of roadways and paths crossing through here but the point of interest when we look at it is that coming up from the Quinnebog River there are a number of roadways and paths that converge and point towards our destination in Woodstock. We're ascending the hill about in the middle of the Thompson Woods and there are a number of things that make it special to walk in the woods this time of year. First and foremost is the foliage that we get to see on the ground level walking through this woodland but also the fact that if we stop 
there's a quietness in the woods here that can't be found in many places. And another of the beauties of this time of year is the underbrush falls away so we can see more of the woods. And best of all, the bug season have passed. So the pests that bother us in the warm weather are gone. Just a short distance further along our path, we come to a larger ancient box culvert on a small stream that we can zoom in and you can get a little bit more detail on the structure here of how the flat stones were interlaid to form an arch to span the brook. Box culverts like this are found all along the old Connecticut path and are testaments to the ingenuity of the early settlers in using natural materials readily available to them. In my travels through the woods, I come across a lot of signs and most of them say don't or do not or it's forbidden. But here in Woodstock, we have a little bit different spin on welcoming people into the area to read the sign and just observe this and be welcome to pass through. Following a woodland path here in Woodstock, we come down to the edge of our John Stone Pond and look out and enjoy the autumn foliage here on the water. As we come out of the woods after passing John Stone Pond, we enter a meadowland that's still in use as a cornfield and a place to raise crops. So we could, with our imagination, envision travelers along the old Connecticut path finding cornfields right here in this area in the vicinity of Synexit Meadow. We've come down from the woods and reached Synexit Meadow and right in front of us is the muddy brook that flows through Synexit Meadow. So we'll pause for a moment here to reflect on the route we've taken and where we're headed to in Woodstock. Today we have been following old cartways and paths from the Quinnebog River fording place across the Thompson Woods in an effort to establish the route as mapped by Ellen Larned. If we look at Ellen Larned's map of this area and her drawing of the route of the old Connecticut path, and we compare it with the actual route that we've followed today, we'll find that it conforms closely with the route that Ellen Larned mapped, with the exception that it did not go directly over Chandler Hill. It curved around it following the contours of the hill in a way that led it to the south side that we've seen in other places as we followed the old Connecticut path. Larned's mapping of the old Connecticut path coming from the Quinnebog River to the Synexit Meadow may have reflected the early years of travel along the old Connecticut path prior to settlement and prior to the King Philip's War. Settlement here in Woodstock began in 1686, about 10 years after the conclusion of King Philip's War. And at that time, different routes were found for settlers to travel on to reach Woodstock. Here at Synexit Meadow, we have the junction of two later routes to Woodstock. And the first is one that heads east towards Thompson over Bull Hill. And so we'll take a quick detour to fly out to Thompson and trace this route back to Synexit Meadow. We've flown over from Synexit Meadow in Woodstock to the center of Thompson here on the common. The busy intersection here is right at the corner of what was formerly the middle post road that ran from Boston on through Thompson down to Putnam and then on to Hartford. Now, according to Ellen Larned in her history of Wyndham County, the first settlers of Woodstock came by way of the route that later became the Middle Post Road, traveling through Menden about 20 miles east of here. The most direct route 
for those early travelers to settle in Woodstock would have been down across Grosvenordale and over Bull Hill Road to the Synexic Meadow. The route over Bull Hill did not come to be known as the Old Connecticut Path. Locally, the Old Connecticut Path is thought to be the road that leads north from here to Fabian and New Boston and the Quinnebog River crossing there. So we'll take a few moments to explore that and see how that may have come about. We've come north a short distance from Synexit Meadow and Muddy Brook to the junction of Payne District Road and the marker that was placed here by the Woodstock Historical Society saying the Old Connecticut Path. Now this might cause some confusion because we've just walked over the Old Connecticut Path as Ellen Larned mapped from the Quinnebog River across the backside of Chandler Hill. Now there would have been several ways to get to Woodstock and we'll see if we can clear up how this particular route came to be known as the Old Connecticut Path by traveling north about a dozen miles to Oxford. Another of the ways to Woodstock that had a place in history began here in Oxford, Massachusetts and we are at the site of the Huguenot Fort and the Huguenot Settlement. The Huguenot Fort is here on Fort Hill and it's just west from Manchog Pond and Waters Farm that's located right on the Old Connecticut Path. And this area in 1686 was settled by the Huguenots who were refugees from France. Now in 1686 this was the western frontier and the only other settlement in this area was in Woodstock which is about 13 miles southwest of here. So for mutual defense they established a path or roadway that they could follow quickly to provide mutual assistance in the event of raids uh, on their settlement. While the settlement in Woodstock was a success, the Huguenots gave up on establishing settlement here after a raid and massacre of the residents. But the path and then roadway that they established persists as the Woodstock-Oxford Road. You can follow this route today fairly closely and you'll see that it's what, what, what might be considered prime real estate. And back in that time, much of the land along that route was owned by William Stoughton and Joseph Dudley. And they stood to profit immensely by having a route that would show off the prime real estate leading from West Sutton on down to Woodstock. And so early settlement built along this route. So I suspect that the footpath of the natives followed by the earliest travelers along the old Connecticut path came in time of settlement after King Philip's War to be replaced by this roadway which is now noted as the old Connecticut path. Our journey along the Old Connecticut Path has brought us from the fording place on the Quinnebog River to Synexit Meadow here in Woodstock. We followed the route mapped by Ellen Larned in her map of ancient Wyndham County. And we also explored the route of the early settlers of Woodstock. Three ways to Woodstock converge here at Synexit Meadow on the banks of Muddy Brook. The ancient footpath the Great Trail, followed by the native people and the first pioneers journeying to Connecticut, comes southwest along the line of Reverend John Elliott's praying villages. The way of the first comers to Woodstock, who journeyed from Roxbury by the Menden Way, crossing the French and Quinnebog Valleys to settle here in Woodstock in 1686. And the Woodstock-Oxford Road, the new Connecticut path, blazed by the early Huguenot and Woodstock settlers for mutual protection when this was the dangerous western frontier. These three ways to Woodstock played an important part in travel during the early colonial period and during the period of settlement here in Woodstock and in Connecticut. For more information about our travels today, 
please visit the Old Connecticut Path website.